Good morning, everybody. It's Friday, April 19th. As you can see, I'm in the Hoopos. I'm going to try to do a brief update just to show you what's growing in here, and then give you a little look at the arrow garden and the uh, light garden up at the house with the seedlings that I've got started. I will add um, a new list um, below this video of the all the things that I've got started so far because as you know I'm using numbered tags instead of tags with names on them in the various plant pots. Several things have been added since my last video. There's still more to be added and they will be planted quite soon now. Uh, some of the things don't, don't get planted too much before they get put outside. Uh, temperatures here still are not very warm. It's overcast today and I think about 7 degrees when I came out. Um, I don't think we've had it past 15 degrees yet this spring. Long range forecast shows that improving next week. Uh, more sunshine and more spring type weather. So I hope that holds true. Anyway, give you a little look around here. This is a bed of early uh, peas that I've planted. I'm not really certain now of the data. I must be able to look it up somehow, but right off the top of my head now I can't recall exactly uh, when they were planted, but probably close to two weeks ago. There are five short rows in this uh, little bed here. I'll zoom back and show you the rest of the bed. I think I will. There we go. Uh, the variety is a bush pea so they don't really need any support. You probably can see some chicken wire mesh both sides. Used that last summer to grow cucumbers up and I think I'll probably do the same thing later on this spring when the peas have finished. Anyway, the peas are all coming up. All five rows are, are showing quite nicely. I've been away for a couple of days and they were just starting when I left and now they're really coming along. Next here is two short rows of daikon radish. Japanese daikon radish. It's the same vegetable that the uh, Chinese refer to as a turnip. It's used either raw or cooked. I grew them for the first time last year and was amazed at the size. Uh, April cross I think is the variety but you can look at the list down below to confirm that. Um, it said on the seed packet they'll grow up to 16 inches long and I thought well you yeah, know probably but not in my garden. Well they would have if the soil had been deep enough. So this year instead of planting them on flat surfaces I've got two rows where I hoed up the soil, probably still not 16 inches deep, but it's much deeper than it was last year. And they were planted the same day as the peas and came up quite quickly. And as you can see, the seedlings are looking quite healthy, along with the weeds that are up all around them. I've got to do some weeding in here, I guess. Well, I had a number of strawberry plants. I had a few that I moved in here last year, the um, sort of ornamental ones, pink flowering, and then a couple of the uh, white flowering variety. I'm really not sure what the varieties were. I've got two larger beds that I started out in the garden last year and I, I think they've come through the winter okay. But as you can see the ones in here are in bloom and they have been for quite some time. I'm going around with a little artist paintbrush and pretending to be a bumblebee so hopefully I'll get some some early uh, strawberries in here. But the thing that interests me is last year I had probably half and half white blossoms and the ones with the sort of ornamental pink blossoms. I don't have a thing that's showing pink this year, at least not so far. I gathered them up. They were growing along the edges of this bed. I gathered them up and made a small plot of them. If they produce, I'll keep them. If I don't, they'll vanish. I'll take you over and show you what's in those uh, flats next. Well, this is that little experiment that I started a few weeks ago to see if things would germinate out here without heat. And it's been, well, I would say very successful, I guess. All of the varieties have come up in every cell with the exception of 18, if you can see that. That is the cabbage. And only the first one at the bottom there germinated. The other three don't have anything in them. I've just put some seed in them again a few days ago, so hopefully they will come up. But those were all cold crops, lettuce, cabbage, and uh, broccoli, cauliflower, collards, I think, as well. So, they did germinate anyway, and down below, boom, yeah, okay. Directly below that is a flat that I planted sweet peas, the uh, you know annual flower, highly scented garden flower. 
one seed in every of the 40 cells there and so far nothing <laughs> they've been in there for a week I just took the dome off so you could get a look inside of it the other two flats off to the right are uh, my onion seedlings zoom in on them or not here gives you a better look they've been out here for over a week uh, the cold nights did sort of give them a bit of a setback, but they're once again picking up now and, and doing quite well. And the plant that you probably caught a glimpse of, this thing here, that's a purple kohlrabi that overwintered in here, and I didn't bother to pull it up and discard it. Uh, a lot of these sort of things, when they overwinter, you don't get much more growth out of them. They bolt and go to seed, start to bloom. So that hasn't started to do that yet, but if it does, it's going to vanish. Let's have a look now at, uh, I'll show you what is happening with the uh, wild um, grape seedlings that I'm going to be putting out in the garden. It shows you the buds that I want you to see. I said out in the garden, these are, I think it's eight or nine seedlings that I started last year from cuttings of a wild native uh, river grape in New Brunswick. It's not going in my garden for me to harvest. I'm going to plant them up trellises, I think maybe one or two up the sides of the cabin and maybe one on my house and the rest of them around the base of trees to grow up trees for wild uh, bird food. Anyway, you can see the buds are fattening up there. They're actually um, doing better than the two cultivated varieties that I'm growing in here. Not, nothing has shown a leaf yet, but the, the buds do continue to to enlarge. Well, I'll show you a wildflower that's growing in here, then we'll go I to hope the I have the camera pointed at the one that I'm going to take a little look at here. That's a wild white violet. I pulled out lots of those seedlings last year and thought they were violets. I didn't leave them long enough to let them bloom. Uh, this is a commercial mix, plus compost and perlite and whatever. So they, they didn't come in, in that. The only thing that could possibly have happened, I guess, I didn't use a weed barrier down below when I made these beds. So they've come up through 8 to 10 inches of, of soil. There's lots of them this spring. And I, before I plant anything, I'll have to weed them all out. But April 19th, and I have violets in bloom anyway. Well, this is the hydroponics that have been in front of the uh, glass door here for, I don't know, probably close to two weeks now. I just changed the water and added new nutrients last night. I really use it a lot more frequently now that it's this close, getting various herbs from it, well the parsley for one thing and some of the summer savory, uh, and the lettuce. I use the lettuce from it almost daily in sandwiches and whatever. This is the uh, Swiss chard, which appeared to have bolted like it was going to go to seed which quite possibly is what it is doing, but the interesting thing is, so far no blossoms or any sign of blossoms, so I think I may nip that off and have it with some of the mustard greens later today and encourage some more growth to come from the bottom, perhaps. I don't know how much longer I can keep this going. I, mean, I know the herbs would last for a considerable length of time yet, but uh, the lettuce plants and whatever are probably nearing the end of their productive life anyway. This is the Aero Garden 3, which has been going, well, it was planted, I think, two days after Christmas. Um, the dill, if it, if it had been left alone, would probably have grown four or five feet tall by now, but this is sort of a bonsai dill. I keep clipping it so that it doesn't get up into the lights. If I uh, had to raise the light any higher, there wouldn't be light enough for the basil and the thyme. Uh, all three plants have done very well and they're still growing. I have no idea how much longer to expect life out of them, but I'm particularly impressed with the basil and the dill. Uh, in a garden they both would have gone to seed long before this, but evidently keeping them pruned back, I've never seen any blossoms come on them at all. And I use all three herbs quite frequently. It's a wonderful little thing to have. Uh, these pass away, I will probably grow something else uh, in it, more herbs or whatever for use in the kitchen. But the, uh, I just keep pruning this basil back and it just keeps getting thicker and doesn't look too good right after you prune it back, but within a week it's bushed back out again. Anyway, that's the Arrow Garden for those that have been asking questions about it. It was a gift, but I think now that I know about them, if anything ever happened to it, I would replace it. It's, uh, a great little addition to have for fresh herbs.
Well, I've raised the lights high. This is the top deck first shelf on the light garden and I've closed the curtain behind it where the direct sunlight comes from hoping to get a bit better lighting for photography here. I'm not so sure that's really helping any but this is my very special potato plant which hopefully by the first of May or so I will be able to transplant into a smart pot and put out in the hoop house uh, next to it I'm not showing very well. That is the, um, yeah, what do you call it? Okra. I'm only starting one seedling because everybody's told me how big they get. And then the rest of them, I guess you can probably see the number tags and go to the list below. Those are the hybrid peppers, the name of which escapes me right now. And other peppers close to it. You see the difference in the size. All planted the same day. And those hybrid uh, sweet green peppers are just really bolting up. Next to them are the uh, geraniums that I grew from seed and since they've been transplanted they've probably doubled in size. And then further down I think since the last video I don't think I had uh, transplanted the tomatoes into individual pots but the, the varieties of tomatoes that I'm growing are all in individual pots. Not very many plants because I'm going to plant most of them, if not all of them, will grow inside the hoopos and giving them a lot more space than they gave them last year. So fewer seedlings. And we take a look down below and that will close this down. You hear an annoying sort of grinding and sort of ticking noise in the background. Don't worry, it's not a bomb. <laughs> That's the noise that the timer makes on this light garden. It's not for, sometimes it doesn't make any noise at all and it starts doing that. Anyway, these are three different varieties of mustard greens, 12, 13, and 14. You can check out down below. And I have, uh, since the last video, uh, have started some seedlings of the summer savory and sage and this one expensive cucumber seed probably a dollar and a half two dollars per seed you get five seeds in an envelope but if you ever see in the supermarkets the small packages of uh, well four four inch or so slender cucumbers usually eight or so of them in a package and almost four dollars for a package that is supposed to be the variety and it's supposed to be quite prolific all female blossoms it's a hybrid so and it's supposed to uh, produce for over a long period of time so my plan is to grow that in a smart pot on the bench in the hoop house and perhaps towards late summer start another one to have through the fall i like those little cucumbers they're not uh, one that you would use for pickling or canning or anything like that but uh, they're lovely for salads and that sort of thing so anyway that concludes this tour thank you very much for watching any questions or comments leave them below and i will try to answer your questions for you